Next up, we have Lisa Barrett, Clinical Associate Professor of PA Studies, and her presentation is titled, The Other Side of the Stethoscope, When the Teacher Becomes the Student. Hi, everybody. I've been a uh, practicing physician assistant for 23 years and have trained and mentored countless of students of medicine and I felt comfortable with teaching, I've always been spoken about teachable moments. But what happens when the teacher becomes a student? Um, even seasoned teachers can learn from any life event, even when it comes in the form of a challenge. I wanted to share with you what I experienced and encourage you to never miss an opportunity to seize that learnable moment. Seven years ago I was handed a devastating medical diagnosis. We all seek many things to put on our resume, but cancer patient wasn't one of them. But I thought to myself, this is my learnable moment, and I vowed that I would be the best patient I could and to see what I could learn from it. Number one, a decimal point. All of us sitting in this room have a touch of OCD, some of us more than others. Um, that's the conscience that makes us good at what we do. However, almost doesn't cut it in medicine. It's great for horseshoes, and it's great for near collisions. Uh, but there's all no, no place for negotiation in medicine. We have to be 100% all the time. When I hear people say that's not fair, I gently remind them for caring from patients is a privilege and not a right. Every week when the pharmacist would prepare that awful cocktail of medicine that would run through my veins, I trusted that he, wouldn't, he would get it right. In one decimal one way, the cancer wouldn't be killed. One decimal the other way, well, I probably wouldn't be standing here. That's why you have to take that man, of course, by the way. Um, <laughs> So cross your T's, dot your I's, and never accept almost. I had a mentor in critical care who always said to me, good, better, best, never let it rest. So good is better, and better is best. Number two, be a lifelong learner. Sitting in the seats where you are, you're obsessing about organic, fretting over fi finance class, boggled by biology. It's easy to lose sight of what you're doing and why. I'll tell you why. When you're sick, really sick, Trust me, you just take for granted that the doctor who's designing your treatment regimen has read the latest journals, kept up the latest studies, continued his or her lifelong love of learning to give you the latest and greatest, and had an evidence-based approach for that grueling radiation regimen they put you under. Through your hard work and study habits, you're developing a lifelong pattern of commitment and scholarship that will benefit your patients in the end. Number three, trust. Wow, patients will tell you things they don't tell anybody else, not their wives, their husbands, their parents, or their children. And that trust is a privilege. I trusted that everyone who took care of me had my best interests at heart. And when that came to work, they were able to put aside the fact that they had a bad day, they had a sick kid, they had a parking ticket, that they were focused on not reading Facebook, but reading my chart. If I had an emergency, that they would stay with me and they would not rush out the door and ride that emotional roller coaster that every really sick patient rides and they would ride it with me. They were selfless, not selfish. And lastly, your patient's not a problem. They don't, defi don't define them by the disease. Too often I hear patients, real life people, refer to as the trauma in bed 10 or the gallbladder in bed seven. I opened the curtain and expect to see a giant viscera sitting there. <laughs> Remember their dignity. I work in the surgical intensive care unit and I always wondered my family's had all these pictures on the walls uh, of their loved ones all over their beds. You know, when I first get to see these patients, they're awash in lines and tubes, they're attached to a ventilator, they're in a comatose state. And they're so different than the people I see golfing with their grandchildren or, uh, you know, in a cap and gown. Patients want us to see the person, not the disease or the injury. Don't become jaded and forget that. I was blessed to be taken care of by clinicians who never forgot that from, forgot that, you know, from my oncologist who knew my love and passion of dogs and my addiction to Springsteen. Uh, to the volunteer who brought my favorite juice during treatment. Weak, bald, sick, my physical exterior had changed, but the person I was didn't. Never look at your patient as a problem or inconvenience. Look at their soul. Chuck Berry said it best in a song. I know you guys are like, who's Chuck Berry? Um, <laughs> it's a song called You Never Can Tell. Through a strange turn of events, I took care of one of the medical providers that would go on to save my life. Now, it doesn't have to be that grand. The person you take care of may turn out to be not to be president or state of the universe, but even if they don't, that's okay. That person is important to someone. That patient is someone's mother, father, sister, brother. They're someone's Nana, Poppy, Tito, or their BFF. They are loved. And I always sum it up with something. There's a saying that sums it up. To the world, you are one person, but to one person, you are the world. 